What's going on guys? In this video I would like to go over locks. Now locks are usually used when you have many threads trying to access the same variable, usually a global variable, and they're trying to make changes to the shared global variable. So what can happen is when two threads are making changes to a variable at the same time, instead of these changes stacking up, we might only get one change to the original value. So for example, I'm going to show you here, we have four functions working on a global variable. First, let's start off with what the global variable is. In this case, the global variable is going to be x equals zero. And now we have these four functions. Uh, they're going to be changing the value of this global variable. In each of these four uh, functions, we call global, which takes this x and uh, which allows us to access the uh, global namespace and then we make some changes to this x. Okay, so let's take a closer look at all four of these functions. The first two functions are um, pretty much doing what they're, the title of the function is saying. So in this case, adding two is pretty much just adding two, and adding three is just adding three to the uh, global variable. And subtracting four and subtracting one, they're, uh, they're doing just as their title says, they're subtracting four and one uh, respectively. So if we count the totals of the additions and subtractions, we can see that the addition total is five and the subtraction total is five. So technically, if we run these threads, if we run four threads calling each of these functions, our output should end up being zero, which is what we start off with. As you can see here, the global variable is zero. And if we had run these functions, the expected output is uh, zero. However, there's a problem. Sometimes what occurs is when you run these threads multiple, multiple, multiple times, what can happen is two of these threads can access the global variable at the same time, and that sort of gives you faulty results. So let's just to clarify this, let me explain. Okay, so we start off with x equals zero. Now, say we have um, adding, so say we have the two functions adding three and uh, subtracting one. Say we have adding three and subtracting one. So here we go, adding three and subtracting one. Say we have these two accessing the global variable at the same time. So when you access a global variable at the same time, what's gonna happen is it's gonna take the current value. So say the current value is uh, x equals zero. So if they access it at the same time, what happens is adding three is going to add three so the global variable is now going to become plus three so the new value is going to be three however since subtracting one also accessed uh, the global variable at the same time it's not going to take this um, x equals three value it's actually just going to take the original value which is x equals zero so we have x equals zero and we're going to do uh, minus one to it so x will equal minus one so here's what, where the problem starts so now since they accessed the global variable at the same time they sort of have their own independent value so x has the value of three and x equals minus one is just uh, subtracting one from zero so now depending on which one uh, which one of these outputs last that's going to be the new global variable so after accessing the, the global variable and the cha uh, making the changes with their function, say we output uh, negative one first, and then we output three. So what's gonna happen is the negative one is sort of gonna get discarded because three is the new global variable value. Remember, these, uh, these x's are just accessing uh, the global variables. So they're constantly updating, either adding four at minus one, plus three, minus three, that sort of stuff. So. So in this case, we're either going, going to get a value of minus one or three, depending on which thread outputs their uh, value first. So this is a problem. The problem is we're supposed to be getting a value of two in this case, because what happens is adding three is going to add three to the global variable, and then you have subtracting one is going to take that new global variable, which is a three, and then take away one. So we should have an output of two. And this could work vice versa as well. So if x is zero and uh, subtracting one first accesses the x equals zero value, then we'll have a new x value of negative one, and then that the adding three is supposed to access this new negative one value, and that should result in an output of two. 
So we should be having an output of two. So as you can see, if, if two threads access the a global variable at the same time and use the old value instead of the updated value from the previous thread, this sort of uh, can make our, our results a little sketchy, it can uh, produce a faulty result. So I'm going to actually show you show you this in action. So I, I have the code already written. I'm just going to go over it to uh, explain it to you guys. Uh, I've already made a couple of videos on threading. So if you don't know how to initiate threads or you don't understand some of the methods used with threading, please uh, check out those videos. It's in the same play playlist as this video. Okay, so we're importing threading. Uh, X is going to be the global variables, which in this case is zero. And count is count is actually going to be, as if you look within each function, it's going to be the number of times we're going to be accessing the global variable. So we have these th uh, four functions, okay. And now I'm just uh, initializing four different threads. So the target is going to be adding two, subtracting four, adding three, subtracting one. Each thread is going to call each of these functions and there are no parameters or no attributes, uh, no arguments, So because all we're doing is accessing a global variable. So we have four threads, and then we're going to start these threads, and then we're going to join and print X. So this is the script. So the expected result is zero, because we're running each of these functions the same amount of time, 100,000. So we're going to be adding two 100,000 times, then adding 300,000 times, but we're also going to be subtracting five 100,000 times. So we're adding five 100,000 times, and we'll be subtracting five 100,000 times. So the expected result is zero, but um, you're going to see, I, I might have to run this a few times because uh, the, the error, this uh, the, the faulty results don't always show up, but they do show up. So, all right, so I'm going to run this now. I'm going to run this, uh, we'll just give it a title. Testing, testing five. Okay. Uh, we don't need to name this. Okay. Ah, so on the first try, we got we got a uh, strange result. Uh, 134,000. Okay. So let me just run it again. We're running it a few times. Uh, why is it showing up? Cancel. Okay. So we got zero. Okay. Let me just close this. All right. All right, so let's run this one more time. Okay, so we're getting zero. The first time we got a, a really strange number, and now we're getting the expected result. Okay, we're getting zero again. I'm going to continuously run it. We got zero again, so that's one, two, three, four times. Zero again. Zero again. Okay. So it's hard to, ah, uh, here we go. It's hard to reproduce, but, all right. So let's just see how many times that was. Um, so the first time we got a strange number, then we got one, two, three, Four, five. Let me get that again. One, two, three. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. So about eight times. Six, seven, eight. So eight times. So let's just run it a few more times. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, okay. Okay, now, after 18 tries, we get 100,000. So it's it's hard to reproduce, but the error is still there. And now, one more time, just because I want you guys to see that the error is coming. So when we do use locks, and the error is not going to be reproducible. Okay, so one, two, three, four, okay, four try. One more time, we got a strange number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, six. Okay, sixteen try. So within twenty tries, we're getting a strange number. So let me just clear this up. Kernel. Okay. And now I will. Now we'll we'll try to prevent this with uh, locks. Okay, I'm going to show you the easiest way to use locks, and this is with uh, the with statement. Now, if you guys have opened files before, you know that if you use the with statement, you don't have to explicitly close the file. So, you know, like something like with, with open the file name and then w as f, so that's uh, context manager. So, when you use that, the file will automatically close. So, you don't have to explicitly close the files. The with statement does it for you. In the same way, you can utilize locks using the with statement. 
So the, the with statement will automatically lock the lock for you. And then after we finish with the with statement, the, the lock will automatically open. So let's go ahead and apply locks to our thread. Okay, so first we want to create a lock thread. So let me just show you uh, how that's done. Okay. So here, for importing import threading, we're just going to say, uh, we're just going to type lock equals threading dot lock. So that's it. That's, that's how easy it is to create a lock in uh, Python. So lock equals threading dot lock. We just access the threading module and we can create a lock. So once we've created a lock, now we have to utilize the lock within each uh, function. So we have four different functions. So what I'm going to do is just uh, type now with lock. So that's, that's all you're doing. You're using a context manager, the width, and then you're using lock. This should be, we don't need to have global X in the uh, lock statement. We need to have with lock for I in range count X plus equals two. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add this with lock statement to each of the functions. So we want to make sure we, okay, with lock. And now all we have to do is sort of tab everything with lock. Actually, this with lock should go after the global X statement. Okay. Global X for I, okay. So that's it. That's all we have to do to lock X uh, global variable. So now in this case, each thread is only going to be able to access global variable when it's unlocked. So I'm just going to make sure that this is okay. Global variable. Okay, this looks okay. Lock. I don't seem to be make. Oh, actually, this should be capitalized. Threading that lock. So when we uh, try to access the lock class, it should be a. Uh, we should be util utilizing capital L. Okay, so importing. So this looks good. And now I'm going to run this code just to make sure. So we're going to be printing out X in the end. Okay, we expected, uh, oh, here we go. So just expected an indent. Okay, so let me just run this over. Okay, so we got zero. So now this is going to be hard to, to prove it to you guys that actually we are locking the X global variable because uh, when we actually ran the code without utilizing locks, we were getting zero about 18, at most 18 consecutive times. So let's just, uh, let's try it 20 to 25 times. I'm going to run this script about 20 to 25 times and hopefully, even maybe 30 times, hopefully that'll convince you guys that we are actually locking the uh, global variable so that threads could only access it one at a time. All right, so that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, okay, 20. I'm just going to do, run this uh, script pretty quickly now. So as you can see, it's all zeros. This is about 30 something times. I could do this probably about 50 times. As you can see, zero, 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 zero. Zero, 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 zero. I can do this about, see now we're in the 50s. Zero, 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 60, zero, 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 zero. zero. Now we're in the 70s and we're continuously just getting zero. So hopefully um, that convinces you that have, utilizing locks will prevent two threads from accessing a global variable or a shared variable at the same time. And that will uh, prevent some of the data corruption that we were seeing when we didn't utilize locks. Okay, so I just want to explain now what exactly this with statement is doing. Um, so when we call the with lock, with lock, remember, uh, and lock is a lock object in this case. So when we call with lock, what we're actually doing is calling the uh, lock dot acquire dot acquire acquire method. And when we exit out from the context manager, what we're actually calling is um, lock dot release. Oh, sorry. So what? Lock. Uh, there we go. Dot release. Okay. So using the with statement, it gets rid of uh, a lot of this uh, unnecessary code. So if we want to reproduce what we did earlier, so if we actually want to uh, reproduce our function using lock.acquire, all we, we would do is replace 
this with lock with lock that acquire and lock that release lock that release so this is essentially the same thing as using uh, with lock but um, this is more explicit um, with lock it just saves you some time so you don't have to uh, rewrite a lot of this code lock acquire lock that release I don't know it's up to you guys so I guess that's it for a uh, lock so locks actually have parameters such as a uh, timeout and blocks so within lock that acquire there's a couple of parameters you could sort of uh, use to influence how the, the locks work but I think that'll, that'll be a little too much for this video so in the future I make I might make another video showing you some of the parameters and how they affect the utility of locks so okay that's it for this video it was just a simple intro to locks please uh, just leave comments letting me know which liked and disliked about this video and i'll try to improve and i will see you guys next time